let's be real, nobody actually budgeting. But avoiding common budgeting mistakes can be the difference between achieving your financial goals or ending up in a mountain of debt. Have you ever found yourself struggling to stick to a budget, wondering where all your money went at the end of the month? It's happened to the best of us. But the good news is, by understanding and avoiding these common budgeting pitfalls, you can take control of your finances and finally start building the future you deserve. In this video, we're going to dive deep into the five most common budgeting mistakes people make and more importantly, how to avoid them. This first mistake is a big one, guys. You absolutely, positively have to track your spending. It's like trying to drive a car with your eyes closed, you have no idea where you're going, and you're bound to crash. Think about it, if you don't know how much you're spending each month on things like groceries, eating out, or entertainment, how can you expect to make informed decisions about your money? Imagine a young professional, let's call her Sarah. Sarah makes a decent salary, but she's always struggling to make ends meet. She can't figure out why she's constantly dipping into her savings or racking up credit card debt. Sound familiar? Well, Sarah's problem is that she doesn't track her spending. She has a general idea of her big expenses like rent and utilities, but beyond that, it's a mystery. One day, Sarah decides to finally take control of her finances. She starts diligently tracking every dollar she spends for a month. She uses a budgeting app on her phone, makes notes in a spreadsheet, whatever works best for her. At the end of the month, Sarah is shocked by what she finds. She discovers she's spending over $500 each month on takeout coffee and restaurant lunches. That's $6,000 a year. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Sarah can make informed decisions about her spending habits. She cuts back on the daily lattes and packs her lunches a few times a week. Within a few months, Sarah's financial situation drastically improves. The bottom line is, you can't manage what you don't measure. Tracking your expenses is the foundation of any successful budget. All right, let's talk about financial goals. Without them, you're just drifting along, hoping for the best. Setting clear and specific financial goals gives you something to work towards, a reason to be intentional with your money. Do you wanna buy a house? Pay off debt? Retire early? These are all great goals, but you need to define them and break them down into achievable steps. Let's go back to Sarah. Remember how she finally got a handle on her spending by tracking her expenses? Well, now it's time for her to set some financial goals. Sarah's dream is to buy a condo in her city within the next three years. She knows it's a big goal, but she's determined to make it happen. First, she does her research and figures out that she'll need a down payment of around $40,000. That's her big, overarching goal. But to make it less daunting, she breaks it down into smaller, more manageable chunks. She decides to save $1,000 per month towards her down payment. To achieve this, she picks up a side hustle as a freelance writer and uses her newfound budgeting skills to free up extra cash from her regular spending. Sarah also sets smaller, short-term goals along the way. She wants to pay off her credit card debt within the next six months and build a $1,000 emergency fund in the next three. These smaller victories keep her motivated and on track toward her ultimate goal of home ownership. The key takeaway here is that financial goals provide direction and motivation. They give you a roadmap to follow and help you stay focused when things get tough. All right, let's talk about something nobody likes to think about, emergencies. Life throws curveballs. it's just a fact of life. Your car could break down, you could lose your job, you could face an unexpected medical bill. These things happen and when they do, you need to be financially prepared. That's where an emergency fund comes in. It's your financial safety net, your peace of mind. Aim to have at least three to six months worth of living expenses saved up in a separate, easily accessible account. Imagine this, your car decides to give up the ghost. It's time for a new one, and that's going to put a serious dent in your bank account. Now, if you don't have an emergency fund, you're left scrambling. You might have to dip into your savings, if you have any, rack up credit card debt, or worse, ask family or friends for a loan. But if you've got a healthy emergency fund in place, you can handle the situation without breaking a sweat. You can pay for the car repairs or even a down payment on a new car without derailing your entire financial plan. Remember Sarah? After she started tracking her expenses and setting financial goals, she made building an emergency fund a top priority. She knew that having that financial cushion would give her peace of mind and protect her from unexpected events. She started small, setting aside $50 a week into a separate savings account specifically for emergencies. She even automated the transfers so she didn't have to think about it. It took a while but eventually, Sarah reached her goal of a $1,000 emergency fund. And guess what? 
a few months later, her apartment flooded. It was a stressful situation, but because Sarah had that emergency fund, she was able to cover the cost of repairs and replace some damaged belongings without going into debt. The moral of the story is this, don't wait for an emergency to happen before you start building your emergency fund. Let's be honest, we've all been there. You're scrolling through social media and suddenly you're hit with an ad for something you absolutely to have. Or maybe you're walking through the store and you spot a must-have item on sale. Before you know it, you've whipped out your credit card and made an impulse purchase. Impulse purchases are budget killers. They're those little or sometimes not so little expenses that sneak up on you and drain your bank account without you even realizing it. They provide a fleeting moment of satisfaction, but in the long run, they can seriously sabotage your financial goals. The key to curbing impulse purchases is to be mindful of your spending habits. Ask yourself, do I really need this? Or do I just want it in this moment? Will this purchase bring me long-term joy? Or will I have forgotten about it in a week? One effective strategy is to implement a cooling off period. If you see something you want to buy, give yourself 24 hours or even a week to think about it. Chances are the initial urge to buy will have passed and you'll realize you didn't need it after all. Another helpful tip is to create a wants versus needs list. Before you go shopping, write down what you actually need and stick to that list. It's easy to get sidetracked by shiny objects, but having a clear idea of your needs will help you stay focused. Remember Sarah? After taking control of her finances, she realized just how much money she was wasting on impulse purchases. She had a bad habit of buying clothes she didn't need, gadgets she never used, and takeout coffee every day. But Sarah was determined to break this habit. She started by unsubscribing from tempting email lists and unfollowing social media accounts that encouraged her to spend. She also implemented the cooling off period rule. If she saw something she wanted to buy, she'd wait at least 24 hours before making a decision. By curbing her impulse purchases, Sarah was able to free up a significant amount of money in her budget. You've created a budget, you're tracking your expenses, and you're feeling good about your finances. Great, but here's the thing. Budgeting isn't a one-time event, it's an ongoing process. Your income, expenses, and financial goals can change over time, so it's crucial to review and adjust your budget regularly. Think of it like going to the doctor for a checkup. You wouldn't just go once and assume you're healthy forever, right? You need regular checkups to make sure everything is running smoothly. The same goes for your budget. Aim to review it at least once a month or more frequently if your financial situation changes significantly. Look for areas where you can cut back on spending, identify any potential financial leaks, and make adjustments as needed. During your budget review, ask yourself, is my income still the same? Have my expenses increased? Am I on track to reach my financial goals? Are there any areas where I can save more money? Let's go back to Sarah one last time. Remember, she's become a budgeting pro. She's diligently tracking her spending, setting financial goals, and resisting the urge to make impulse purchases. But Sarah knows that her work isn't done. She understands the importance of reviewing her budget regularly. At the beginning of each month, Sarah sits down with her budget spreadsheet and reviews her income and expenses from the previous month. She looks for any areas where she overspent or could have saved more money. For example, one month Sarah noticed that her grocery bill was significantly higher than usual. Upon closer inspection, she realized that she had been eating out more often than she intended so, the following month she made a conscious effort to cook at home more and reduced her dining out budget accordingly. Another time Sarah received a nice raise at work. Instead of letting lifestyle inflation creep in, she used the opportunity to increase her savings rate and make extra payments on her student loans. By regularly reviewing and adjusting her budget, Sarah ensures that she's always in control of her finances. She's able to adapt to changes, make informed financial decisions, and stay on track to achieve her goals. Remember. Your budget is a living document. It's not meant to be set in stone. So there you have it, the five most common budgeting mistakes beginners should avoid. By tracking your expenses, setting financial goals, building an emergency fund, curbing impulse purchases, and reviewing your budget regularly, you'll be well on your way to financial success. What budgeting mistake have you struggled with the most? Share your experiences in the comments below. Let's start a conversation.